Yesterday, Street Money 21 um, gave us a heads up of what's getting ready to take place and um, the catastrophic economic consequences that are heading our way this year. Uh, he also put out, and of course there's a link that I'm going to add below right here, um, a, a letter that the Treasury Secretary Timothy Geithner sent to um, Harry Reid, uh, the Senate Majority Leader. And the letter says this. Uh, he also put out, and the letter says this. I am writing in response to your request for an estimate by the Treasury Department of when the statutory debt limit will be reached and for a description of the consequences of default by the United States. Pay attention to default. Never in the history um, has Congress failed to increase the debt limit when necessary. Failure to raise the limit would precipitate a default by the United States. Default would effectively impose a significant and long-lasting tax on all Americans and all American businesses and could lead to the loss of millions of American jobs. Even a very short-term or limited default would have catastrophic economic consequences that would last for decades. Failure to increase the limit would be deeply irresponsible for these reasons. I am requesting that Congress act to increase the limit early this year, well before the threat of default becomes intimate. Did y'all hear all this crap and garbage? The fear mongering? Let me tell you first. Number one, failure to raise the debt limit ain't going to do nothing. No, it, it, It's not going to have any more dire consequences than what they have already reaped upon the backs of the American people. They have borrowed, not from our future, but from our children, children's future. This country's in deep trouble. Let me translate for you. What they're telling you is, is that we, the United States of America, we're bankrupt. We have run out of options. We have no other options available. China is no longer buying our treasury bills. And what he is saying is, is that if we don't increase the national debt by another $1 trillion this year, then we're going to be in default. Let me tell you something, people. We're in default anyway, and we're not going to stop the default. It's imminent. We should have a long time ago paid attention to people who got some sense, like Peter Schiff and them, who was trying to tell us a long time ago what we should have done. We should have just let things pan out, let things, let the market, let the free market determine um, how things are going to play out. But no, the government as usual got to get in, got to control everything. And as a result, we got some bad situations. He's calling for this by early spring. If we don't do this, he, we're going to default. That means that we're going to default on all the interest payments that we owe other nations. Russia and China have already opted out of the dollar. China's not going to buy our treasury bills no more, our T-bonds. They, they're not buying them anymore. Um, the, other, the, the other nations in the world have already done started to start trading within themselves, and they're getting out of dollars. Dollars this year, the American dollar, the dollar is no longer going to be the reserve currency of the world. We're going to lose our AAA status, and there ain't nothing we're going to do about it. Why? Because we're a bunch of bankrupt, jackleg liars. That's what it is. That is what our government is. And so their only solution that they've got is print more money, print more money, print more money. Now I'm going to tell you, you know, gold and silver has always been a medium of exchange. It has never, ever been to zero in the history of time. Fiat currencies and empires that are built on fiat currency have always failed. So, well, you know what that's telling me also? That's telling me that there's getting ready to be a run on physical silver and physical gold. Because if they have a world bank, which I believe that they're in the process of doing, it's going to be backed up by coin. Coin, coin, coin. And it's almost getting too late for many of you who have been told over the years, over the years, to put your money in tangible assets, real physical assets, something you can hold in your hand, that's almost too late now. Um, I think that um, maybe by next month or maybe by this spring, 
it's almost going to be impossible to even find a piece of silver to buy. Uh, and that's how bad the situation is. So basically they're telling you is that we're already bankrupt and we're printing money out of thin air. And the only thing that is staving this so-called depression, we're in it right now. We're in an inflationary depression right now, whether you like it or not. And we're headed towards hyperinflation. And I understand that many of you people out there that listen have no idea what I'm talking about. But I'm talking to the people in the know, and I always try to hope to depend on people uh, can, that can articulate and help translate what I'm trying to say to help better give you an understanding. Um, it's always been austerity measures for us and defaults and bailouts for them. Well, that's getting ready to stop. No doubt about it. You're going to wish that you had listened to all the voices of wisdom that had told you a long time ago you need to get some physical silver, physical gold in your hand. You're going to wish. Somebody said to me that silver at $30 an ounce is, man, that's kind of expensive, Pastor Dow. Well, guess what? When silver hits $50 and $100 an ounce, you're not even going to be able to afford that because the purchasing power of your dollar is losing value every single day. We're going to be in bad, bad shape. The diarrhea has done already done started hitting the fan. And that's the truth. Hate to use those superlatives, but it's the truth. You haven't prepared yourself. Um, and you've trusted these cronies and these liars on Fox News and CNN and uh, MSNBC and, and um, Jim Cramer and CSNBC and, and Fox Business and all these other pigs out here who don't have enough sense um, and I, I'm going to stop before I get a little bit too graphic. But I'll tell you what. That letter just got finished telling me that the United States of America is out of options. We don't have no other recourse. We have nothing else to do but to print money. And that's it. Stock market is going to crash. Um, get your money out of the banks. Every cent. You need to go run and get them out. Because a bank holiday is coming. Because some way, somehow, they're going to have to use the IRAs. They're going to have to use mutual funds. They're going to have to use 401ks. They're going to use anything that you have in paper to pay the interest on this national debt. They're going to have to. They're going to have to do something. So a bank holiday is coming. It is coming. And that's the truth. from Ohio. The only way they can pass this bill is by creating and sustaining a panic atmosphere. That atmosphere is not justified. Many of us were told in private conversations that if we voted against this bill on Monday that the sky would fall, the market would drop two or three thousand points the first day, another couple thousand the second day, and a few members were even told that there would be martial law in America if we voted no. That's what I call fear-mongering. Unjustified. Proven wrong. We've got a week, we've got two weeks to write a good bill. The only way to write, to pass a bad bill, keep the panic pressure on. Now what has the Senate done to this bill?